What's going on? Gozi here and welcome back to the channel. On my last video, I believe I touched a bit more on the issues that we've been having with the Pro Charger bracket uh, ever since we pull it down. Uh, I think I snapped about 25 belts or more uh, in the past like four, five, six months uh, along with multiple bearing failures on the uh, flip drive pulley. And I am at my limits with this current bracket setup because we tried everything from several different belt lengths to uh, laser alignment to uh, shimming the brackets and uh, nothing. And honestly, if this was an issue that I was the only one having, I probably would have been a little bit more motivated uh, to get to the bottom of it, probably would have scorched the earth uh, to uh, figure something out. But when you have multiple people on the forums, you know, uh, with the same failures, and it just, to me, it just points to a terrible design flaw um, on this bracket design. So I knew that uh, I was just chasing my own tail and uh, wasting time. Literally pull it down and it's been nothing but issues. Uh, I mean, I've lost track. I'm sure I've, I've spent at least uh, 600 bucks on belts uh, in the past like four or five months. And that's a few hundred dollars on belts that I've already ripped. And this box is another four or five hundred dollars worth of belts. Uh, I mean, you know, you gotta think, uh, each of these belts are, we're averaging anywhere from 50 to 60 bucks, uh, some of them a little bit more. And I have a good, what, nine to 10 in here. So have a couple more in the trunk uh, as a backup. And honestly, spending that much on belts, the car felt very, very unreliable. Uh, snapping a belt uh, literally after every uh, one or two pulls. Um, and you know, I'm not the type to give up easily, so I felt like I could get to the bottom of it, but after six months of you know just the same uh, same repeated bull crap, it was just, I don't know, we had to try something different. Um, I still want to run the turbo on this car, but we went ahead and we invested in some a and a stuff so <clears throat> in this box we have the uh innovators west uh eight inch crank pulley looking looking pretty icy uh got a couple questions about that because i'm not sure if it's going to be too big to run with my current water pump uh pulley size uh, I have to call A and A and ask, but I might be finding out before I can even call them because I'm gonna be try to I'm gonna try to put that on on the car tonight, and then came came with uh some some studs and parts that are gonna be mounted with the bracket, a couple belt sizes. I am running I am gonna be running a uh, ten rib this time, so hopefully I don't have these uh, belt breaking issues anymore. All right, and here's the main bracket that the Pro Charger head unit is gonna be mounted onto. And just by holding it, just by looking at it, you can just tell that this is a much uh, better design, much better quality. Uh, I do have faith in this. I, I, I think it should work. I believe it's gonna work. All right, so if this, this doesn't work, we'll be going uh, single, single turbo. And here is their their version of the secondary drive, aka flip drive, and alternator, power steering, tensioner assembly, along with the other uh, piece for the head unit assembly here. So, a uh, couple questions that I still have that I think A&A might be able to answer. Uh, one of them being. Um, I, Actually, I think I should be able to loosen these uh, screws on the Pro Charger uh, head unit and rotate the uh, compressor housing. Because I, because from what I understand, with the A and A bracket, it's it's gonna shift the position of the Pro Charger head unit a bit. So if I can have it where uh, I can align it back to the same spot, I wouldn't have to run any other hosing or you know make any more modifications to the plumbing system. So hopefully we can just have it back where it's at right now and and be good to go. This is the last time you're gonna see this crappy Pro Charger bracket on this car. All right, so get a good look at it before I dive into it and start ripping this baby apart.
halftime check-in and we've got all the components from the pro charger off just took the crank out well the crank pulley so now i'm ready to start installing the a and a stuff i don't know if y'all can see that but the magnum crank comes double notched you got one up here and down here so i'm gonna have to take my time and file that other side um for the notch on the uh innovators west dampener and then we'll be ready to slide that bad boy in had to do the same thing with the uh, ati I'm supposed to send it out to get machined but ain't nobody got time for that i just uh add a little bit of rtv to make sure that oil doesn't seep out past those notches and good to go all right so i got everything mounted and i'm gonna re-verify pulley alignment without the belt i don't know if you guys can see that so we have have the laser showing that we are that center of the pulley on the tensioner but i'm going to now focus it onto the crank give me a second here it might take me a little bit let's see all right boom there we go so now i'm gonna put that same put on the same uh rib uh hold on all right there we go but if you look on a crank we are a little bit off so that our laser is shining one more rib forward of the uh, crank pulley away from the motor so on the rib if it was zeroed out it'd be right there hold on it'd, it'd be uh, i'm fucking this up if it was zeroed out it'd be shining right here right there so that is zeroed out but once i relax the tool as you can see it's it's on the rib of the uh, tensioner but for the crank pulley it's a little bit off so what it tells me is that we have to do some modifications to the setup uh in order to make this work i might have to take off some materials uh from this back uh spacers or maybe even add a shim here and there uh to get uh these uh to get these pulleys properly aligned after some troubleshooting, initially I added some washers uh, on this L bracket, uh, top bottom, uh, and the spacer here. Uh, without any luck, uh, I took both the uh, washers out of out of this bracket here. I left the one there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And I think we're onto something here. So I'm gonna put the tool alignment in and easily right on the money and with the uh, bracket bracket pulley as well, the attentional pulley. So I think we're onto something here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, manual tensioner back in and uh, mount it with the belt and uh, give it a go, see what happens. Got the belt routed through the crank pulley and slid the boat in to set the uh tensioner preload and ready to throw this bad boy in
A and A brackets are installed. Took it for a drive last night to uh, properly break things in and make sure everything was rotating as it should be. Looked outside earlier and it, and it did rain overnight. I did want to include uh, some of our test hits in this video, but it looks like that's going to be waiting until the next video. Alright, um, let's go over some of the things that I had to do uh, to make this work. Alright, so I started off with the crank, right? So, uh, we upgraded to our Innovators West 8-inch uh, crank. And to get to that uh, crank bolt, you have two options. You can either slide the rack and pinion uh, out of the way, either driver's side or passenger side. I find sliding, uh, sliding it over to the passenger side a little bit easier. Or you can drop the uh, subframe not completely but drop it just enough where you have enough clearance to get to that boat and to pull the crank out so uh, i ended up doing that uh dropping the rear subframe and the first thing i did was uh yeah so install the crank and then i did the uh, power steering uh alternator side first all right so this uh bracket here had every bracket uh for the alternator and the power steering i had to cut uh the bottom uh piece of it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, just to get the uh, bracket for the flip drive, which is this black pulley here. The bracket for that to fit. So we did that. Mounted that up. And then for the um, supercharger, for the main bracket that boasts up to the head, this bad boy right here, I had to cut a piece off of that because I am running an aftermarket water pump. Here's a piece that I cut off right here. All right, and let that focus right here. So did just that, and that gave us uh, the proper clearance that we needed. As you can see, I'm gonna put that piece back, and you can just see how you know it wouldn't have worked because it had been hitting the top of this mount right here. So did that, bolted it up. Everything was going seamless. Um, verified the uh, <clears throat> verified the pulley angle of the uh, head unit. Um, the uh, tensioner and the uh, uh, crank pulley as well. Um, at first, uh, things were not looking too lined up. Uh, I ended up, ended up having to take it back off, uh, play with it a little bit, and I added a shim on this bottom bottom stud, this one here. I had a shim to that, and it lined up, zeroed out, perfect. Couldn't be, couldn't be any more, um, any more in line. Oh, and I did also have to shave. A little bit off the water pump housing which is right here and that's because this idler on the uh, tensioner was pretty much like riding on it so shave it down to create a little bit more clearance and um yeah good to go i don't know if i missed anything uh, i'm trying to think here one thing i did notice with the ana bracket is that the supercharger does look to sit up a little bit higher than it was before which is fine because now you know i have a, a more streamlined uh flow uh for air um, still not running the screen, uh, full send. All right, <laughs> what else? And right now we're running just straight water for the cooling system, uh, just until I make sure that uh, everything is 100%. Because uh, it looks like every time I'm gonna have to take this supercharger off or swap out the belt, I will have to also break loose that uh, thermostat housing as well. And that'll pretty much leak all the coolant. I guess that our water temps got last night was about 171 172 which is which is pretty much the average um usually when i do hits uh repeated hits on a car i don't even see higher than 185 ish so yeah yeah it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty stout uh cooling system that i got here um what else what else so what else what else all right so with that being said eight inch crank pulley combined with a 4.06 upper uh our prior uh, setup we were running a 4.125 upper so bigger pulley uh bigger lower pulley smaller upper and now i'm going to be actually over spinning the head unit by another 8,000 rpms uh pro charger rated this head unit for 68,000 max right and with this combo, I'm going to be revving it up to uh, right around 76, 77,000 RPMs. So at 60, 69, uh, roughly, uh, with the old combo, we got about 22.9, 23 PSI out of it. So with this combo, I'm going to be guessing somewhere in the 24 PSI, maybe 25. 
uh, 25 I'd be pretty happy with. And hopefully with that pulley combo, it will it should net us uh, somewhere in the 24 PSI, uh, maybe 25 pounds. Um, we'll see, which is uh, getting close to what the head unit is rated for anyway. I think the I think that F F1R is rated for right around 1250. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if they got that number from either overspinning or what is rated at, but we did not get that uh, spinning it to the maximum on the um, on the last pulley combo. All right, so overspinning the head unit does create a lot of heat. Uh, I'm running 485 right now, uh, no knock, and but I think it's time that we threw some meth in the car. So I actually uh, paid for a uh, used kit off of one of the bros. It should be here sometime next week. And uh, I'm going to be using it not as an octane booster, not for fueling. It'll be just strictly to uh, cool the intake uh, air temps down. Um, and it's going to be tricky because I can either get rid of the math and go speed density or find a good spot to uh, mount the uh, nozzles uh, for the meth. Um, I was thinking maybe somewhere right, somewhere right here but is there a chance that it might still spray on the math? Maybe. Um, I'm not too fond of putting it on a rubber coupling because then I might have, uh, I might create some more uh, calls for leaks. And then the third idea was to actually uh, drill into each of these runners on a high ram, drill into each of these runners on a high ram and literally have a nozzle for each cylinder. I do want to uh, someday put a, uh, secondary intake air temperature somewhere on the car but with the nozzle um, idea I wouldn't really see that that are dropping uh, intake air temps but I mean I don't care as long as the meth uh, is doing its job uh, cooling that our charged air then I think we should be good I could add another nozzle under here uh, and that'll be just for reference um, that way when I do see that drop in intake air temp I can then verify okay you know if that's spraying then the ones in the runner should be spraying as well. So that would be more like a reference, uh, you know, um, like a reference mount or whatever. And like I said, took a look outside earlier and it looks like it rained a little bit last night. So I'm not going to be doing any test hits on this video, uh, but stay tuned. Uh, the next video for sure, we're going to be testing out this new setup um, to see how it handles. All right, and on the flip, all right, so... Quarter panels are installed. I'm not sure if I covered this on the last video. Quarter panels are installed, and he is currently waiting uh, the wrap for it. It's going to be a carbon fiber wrap, the same one I have on the wing and uh, on my roof as well. I'm running factory Z06, C706 slash uh, ZR1 wheels. Fits real flush with the uh, fender as well. Nice, nice clean look. All right, and on the side note, so, my brother's car was the first car that I tuned from uh, bone stock to heads cam, well not heads, to uh, cam, exhaust, um, and E85. Alright, so the first thing I had to dial in this car uh, was the uh, card style map sensor. I'm sure you guys remember that. Because factory they come with this circular uh, honeycomb style. It was very uh, restrictive. That was the first thing I had to dial in on the car and I appreciate him for uh, trusting me um, with his car, with his setup. So this was definitely the car that I learned on. I had a uh, heads cam uh, vet back then um, but I was down for clutch and you know and other stuff so I couldn't really uh, mess with that car too much but this was definitely my uh, my uh, ground zero right here and it's, it's just cool to see it you know come a long way so I finally found out uh, what it was making put on the dyno um, three days ago and she made she made more I let that focus she made more torque than she did horsepower so 448 441 so that tells me two things right um i mean you could argue uh maybe the cam is too big for the setup but the way i'm the way that i'm looking at it is it just needs to breathe so if he's making that much torque i think with some um uh with some airflow it should make somewhere in the fives right because usually you know you see uh horsepower higher than torque this is this is almost like a truck setup like i would expect this you know from a truck or something but on a vet it, it definitely needs definitely needs some help breathing so i told him you can either run a either like a high ramp style or maybe like a fast 102 a bigger throttle body uh and i think the car's gonna breathe a lot better it's still the fact that we had uh it's not ported 
So maybe we can squeeze some out of that too, or just run maybe aftermarket heads. Um, but I mean, just try to try to squeeze out what we can. Uh, that is still gonna work uh, with the next phase. So even if it, even if my pro charger works, um, the new A uh, and A uh, bracket setup, the plan is still to put that pro charger onto this car. He might need some bottom end work. Um, but we're going to throw it on there and maybe get it up to anywhere from 750 to 800 and you know just leave it there until he does uh get the motor built all right so definitely definitely a lot of a lot of plans for this car and i've been meaning to actually uh do a video i want to do one more you know of me driving it driving it on the street doing a review on it but i just been too busy so uh i, I promise that i would and i still have it for action okay so uh just bear with me here um it's just i don't know I, I just have too much too much going on and last time we spoke i told you guys that i was moving to uh oceana uh virginia beach area sometime in um the late fall well the navy said screw that you have eight weeks left in jacksonville get your shit together so i've been looking in the housing market you know just trying to get my ducks up line in a row still gotta get this car done i've been bullshitting with this car just playing with it um on my on my spare time that i don't have but now it's definitely crunch time so i need to get this motor out of here fixed and get this car out of here yeah so it's definitely definitely crunch time definitely crunch time that concludes us for this video all right appreciate y'all for tuning in thank you for 6k subscribers and counting all right like the video share the video do subscribe if you haven't already all right and stay tuned for test hits and i'll be seeing y'all on the next upload